keep talking. <laughs> We're getting ready to get started. <laughs> Have to wait for Sean to give me the thumbs up. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> it's good to see everybody out uh, tonight. I uh, have just a, a, a few announcements. Nancy Winstead wanted me to put out a prayer call, but I couldn't get it, like, go out at the house. So I want to thank the church for her prayers. She's at home, uh, and everything turned out good with her heart. So thank you all for those prayers. And I also ask you to remember Jennifer and Shylin. Uh, Sh uh, announced this morning that Shylin was going to uh, be carrying a message tonight, but he's not. There's been a change. So. Just happened I was going out the door. Rhonda's son in law, Nate Olson, said he would be glad to fill in if we needed him anytime. So it just worked out that he was here. So I don't know Nate, but I'm trusting in God that he'll uh, bring the message that we need to hear tonight. So uh, at this time, anybody like to sing the choir? Come on up. We're going to sing out of the Black Book. And it got William Young back here tonight, so it's good to see William. <laughs> he didn't hear me. <laughs>
anybody have a song on their heart tonight? If not, then Nate will turn it over to you. Thankful to be here in the house of God. There's no better place to be than in the house of God and with God's people. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. And I hope that uh, we would just take a moment to remember why it is that we do what we do. Why, wh- why do we get up every morning? And it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And I hope that we can just take a moment to really focus and concentrate on what really matters in this life. Uh, this morning, you know, at Sunday school, we talked about uh, always being ready. Always being ready. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And um, I didn't expect that that being ready would come so soon, but praise God it did. And I'm I'm so uh, thankful to have the opportunity to be here. It's a beautiful church. It's where me and my wife got married at. And it's just such a privilege and honor to be here. And I hope that the Lord would would get me out of the way and use me. Uh, And if nothing else, uh, whenever the word of God is is preached or taught or spoken, there's something that God wants us to learn from it. And I'm thankful that he can speak to each and every one of our hearts in a different way. Um, We're going to be in Ephesians chapter number 5, Ephesians chapter number 5, verses uh, 14 through 18. If you got a Schofield, it's in 1255. I see a lot of Schofields here. <laughs> it's in uh, Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 14. It says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help us in a mighty way. I pray that you would bless this service and that you would speak to our hearts and help us to, we can live a changed and conformed life to what you'd have us to live Thank you for your mercy and your grace, and I pray, Lord, that you'd help us even on this night. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, many people will ask the question, they will say, well, you know, what is the will of God for my life? You know, that's a question I believe all of us as, as Christians have asked. I, I've asked it a million times, but um, in general, in the grand scheme of things, I believe that this could be uh, one of the things that it says is the will of God For our life, and it's understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about uh, jumping a pew and and speaking in tongues and none of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having yielding to that Holy Spirit inside of you and letting Him lead you in the direction that God would have you to go. So, um, so why is this so important that we be filled with the with the uh? that we are filled with the Spirit. Because if we're filled with the Spirit, we're going to live the way that God wants us to live. We're going to walk and we're going to talk and we're going to live our lives just as Jesus would have us when we are being obedient to the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. So everything in this Christian, uh, in, in a sense, everything in this Christian life revolves around this verse of being filled with the Spirit. So, so why is it so important that we do this? It says in verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So what is verse 18 talking about here? Uh, if you look at this chapter, there's not a whole lot of references to wine. Um, let, me, let me ask you a question. Uh, that I don't want you to answer. This is a rhetorical question. How many of you have ever been drunk? How many of you have ever been drunk? It says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. When a person is drunk, it changes a person. I was working a night job. I worked a night job for five years as I was working another day job. 
and I have been, uh, should have been on the roads because I was so tired. I've been pulled over because I was falling asleep at the wheel, and they wanted to make sure that I wasn't drunk. You know, it's kind of funny now, but it <laughs> definitely wasn't funny back then. They made me do the, they made me walk the line. I had to do the little line, change the way you walk. I had to take a breathalyzer test, I had to do my ABCs backwards, change the way you talk. All of these things, when you're filled with wine, it changes everything about you. You are under the influence or under the control of the alcohol. When you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it changes the way you walk, it changes the way you talk, it changes the way you act, it changes the way that you react, it changes everything about your life. And when the Holy Spirit, when you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, you are able to love those who you would have never been able to love. You are able to forgive those who you would have never been able to forgive. I remember there was this guy, uh, he had, I, I had worked with him actually at this night job, and, and he was really mean and hateful to me to where the point that he was so uh, bold and so uh, hateful towards me, they actually had to get rid of him. I was, at a, I was visiting at a church, and I seen what looked exactly like him, and I was, you know, I was listening, I seen him sitting over here on the other side of the building, and I, I had a strong dislike for him back in the day, but you know what, whenever, whenever I seen him, I had a longing to go talk to him, to go speak with him, to go and to, and to see how he was doing, to check on him, because of the Holy Ghost that is in me, it drives you to do things that you could never have done in the energy of the flesh. That is what changes you. When you're saved and that Holy Spirit enters inside of you and when you yield to him, it empowers you to do such great and mighty things. So now while being filled with the Holy Spirit is, is quite simple, being, uh, quite simple is not always easy. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, myself included, I like to lose a little bit of weight, right? So it's simple to lose weight. Diet and exercise, that is not easy. That is not easy to do. Now, why it's simple to be filled with, it's simple to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to allow Him to, to live in our life and to really work through us, it's not easy. Because we live in this sinful flesh, surrounded by sinful people, surrounded by sinful things, and the world is constantly trying to draw us in, constantly trying to pull us in, constantly trying to make us to stumble and to fall and to get our eyes off of what really matters in this life. So let's, let's talk about some ways that, that can help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, in Ephesians 5, 8, it says, For you were sometimes darkness... But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. we got to remember where we were before God saved us. So that we can look at someone else with a heart of compassion and realize that we were no further than hell than they are now. Every Christian can be filled with the Spirit by number one, being saved. You can't you can't be filled with the Spirit if you don't have the Spirit. You got to be saved. You got to know the Lord. You got to have that personal relationship. You know, a lot of people have religion. A lot of people have uh, different uh, qualities, and they go to different services, and they and they do all these things, and it's different than a relationship. It's different than having a relationship with Jesus Christ. I know there's this lady I work with. And she, she goes to church, and she's, you know, and she teaches at the church, and I'm not seeing the love of God on her. She's one of the whole, most hateful people in the whole uh, place I work, and I work with over 150 people. Um, we, God did not save you to die on a pew. He didn't save you so you can just sit down and enjoy the benefits that he's given you of salvation. He wants us to, uh, he wants us to live this life like him, to be conformed to the image of his son, to be like him in all things. So we have to understand that 
God wants us to live a fruit-bearing life. And this fruit-bearing life is found in yielding to the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. Um, so, in, and of course, in order to be saved, you need to realize that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Realize the penalty of sin, some of the things we talked about this morning. Um, believe that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. He died on a cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And a lot of, one thing that a lot of people leave out is what... Uh, Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew 4, 17, he says, repent, repent. Turn away from your sin and turn to God. Are you going to live a perfect life? Absolutely not. There's no one in here that is able to live a perfect life. And that's why Jesus Christ came and he lived that perfect life because he knew that we couldn't. But God wants us to live like him. Um, how many of you have ever invited someone to church? How many, you know, most of us have. You know, I've, you know, I've done, you know, personally at my work or might go, you know, door knocking or wherever you might go. There's a lot of, ex there's a lot of things that I've heard, a lot of excuses. Now, you know, excuses are excuses and not, you know, it uh, doesn't matter if you have an excuse or not, you still should do the right thing. But the majority of the things that I've heard of excuse why people don't come to church is because of hypocrites. I heard it two weeks ago from a coworker. It's because people who say that they're saved and are, aren't living it. Like I said this morning, some, some pe you, you might be the Bible, the only Bible that some people see. You might be the only testament of what Jesus Christ is really about. Would people want to follow you to church? Would peop do people see Christ in you? And do they realize that there is something more to this world than the, the things of this world? That we can have a victorious Christian life in none other but Jesus Christ. In a, you know, God made a change in my life and my belief in him motivated me to action. You see, some people think that they're just going to work their way, that they need to work and then they get saved. No, you get saved, and then because of the love of Christ in your heart and your desire to please him and to live for him will motivate you to action, will motivate you to come to church, will motivate you to live for him, will motivate you to get in this word. Now, is it easy? No, because like I said, we're surrounded by this sinful flesh, and it is so easy to turn on the TV but sometimes we find it such a challenge to open our Bible and to get into it. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that the thing that has all of the answers, where we can find all of our joy, where we can find all of our fulfillment, where we can find all of our peace, when we can find all of the answers of life, and it is one of the most rejected things that we have because everything else is just so important to us. We need to focus on what really matters. And that's him. And other than him. You are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies and in your spirit. I'm thankful that I'm bought. But I don't want to take his grace and his mercy for, in vain. What we need to realize is that um, if you're saved, are you bearing fruit for Christ? Are you, are you just going through the motions? Are you doing just enough to get by? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I need to be here, not because I'm spiritual, but because I'm not spiritual enough. Because I need to grow. Because I need to be under the preaching of the word of God. And if the, and if Sunday is the only time that your Bible is opened and you're struggling spiritually is probably why. This is not a uh, Sunday I'm going to live for Christ and Monday through Saturday I'm going to live for me. If we really want to live for Christ, then we're going to get into this word as often as we can. We say, well, I ain't got time. We got time to do a lot of other things that don't really matter. We need to make sure that our priorities are in the right place. Every Christian can be filled with the Spirit. First of all, you've got to be saved. 
Every Christian can be filled with the Spirit by being separate. That is not a thing that a lot of people like to hear because they want to be like the world and they want to look like the world and they want to act like the world. Well, if that's the case, if it looks like the world and it acts like the world, it's a possibility it could be of the world. But the Bible tells us that we are not of this world. And in verse number 11, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Fellowship means to participate in or to be a partaker of. So often we would like to, to go and, and grab things of this world and we like to participate in them. And we like to involve ourselves in them. And it says uh, unfruitful works of darkness. It's, that means unfruitful. That means uh, without fruit, barren. I do not want to stand before God and have nothing. When, when it, you're going to give an account, and you're going to stand before God. And I don't want to be ashamed at his appearing, saying that I have done nothing for him. Um, so in order for us to be filled with the Spirit, we should not participate in or partake of the wicked things of this world. In Galatians 5, 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That goes into what I was saying a minute ago, when you're being filled with that Spirit you're able to do those things that you were not able to do when you were in the energy of the flesh. And it says in verse 18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you remember what Jesus Christ said in uh, Matthew 22, verse 37, when he asked what is the great, when the lawyer, I believe it was, asked what the great commandment is. It says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, why is this? It says, um, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. If we love God like we're supposed to, and we love others like we're supposed to, in that we will be able to keep the Ten Commandments. Why is that? If you love someone, you're not going to steal from them. If you love someone, you're not going to lie to them. If you, so on and so forth. If you go through the Ten Commandments, you will find that that's why if you look in verse number 40 of that verse, it says, and this is the, is the law fulfilled. Because whenever we put God as our first priority and we love those that are around us as Jesus loved us, we're able to live a victorious Christian life. So, so what decides whether you will live victorious whether you will live a victorious Christian life in the spirit or will live in loss of the flesh. There was this, there was this, this is an illustration I'm going to use. Uh, there was this guy, he would fight, he would fight dogs. I know none of us do that. You know, of course, I never do that. Um, but he would fight dogs and there was this guy that would come up to him. And he says, how do you always know who's going to win? He said, the one that I feed is going to win. And the one that I do not feed is going to lose. You have a choice. Are you going to feed the spirit that is inside of you and live a victorious Christian life? Because when you feed yourself with the things of God, when you feed this spirit with the word of God and the things of God, that spirit inside of you is able to, to help you to live a victorious Christian life. And that flesh in us begins to die. Remember what Paul said, I die daily because he knew the wickedness of his flesh and he knew what would happen if he were to go back to where he came from. So it's important that 
we feed this spirit that is inside of us every single day. And the more that we feed this spirit, the stronger that it will be able to become. So, so what happens uh, when you fill yourself with the sinful things of this world? I'm going to read Ephesians 4.30. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. What does it mean to grieve? It says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve means to distress, to cause grief, to make sad, to make sad. Whenever you are to do that with someone, if I am to, to cause distress to someone or make someone sad, what does it do? It breaks fellowship. It hinders. It puts somewhat of a pause. It makes that person kind of step back a little bit. That's why we got to be careful not to entangle ourselves with the things of this world. In 1 Thessalonians 5.19, it says, quench not the spirit. What does it mean to quench? What does it mean to quench? Quench means to extinguish. To extinguish. There was a fire at work in the laser machine over here on the side, and what they did was they got a fire extinguisher, and they began to douse that fire. So what happened to the fire was it became powered. It was none, it was of no longer of any effect. It could no longer do anything. Do not quench the spirit. Do not extinguish the spirit that is inside of us. What are, what are some things that can grieve or even quench the Holy Spirit that is inside of us? What you have to understand is it could be anything that separates you from God. It can be what you listen to on the radio. It could be what you watch on TV. It can be what you do on your phone. It could be the way that you treat people. That's a tough one. It could be the way that you react to certain situations in your life. Any, it can be anything that you focus on that is not pleasing to God. Anything that you put before God has become an idol in your life. So, the more that you fill your heart and your mind with the things of this world, the more that you're feeding the sinful flesh. And the chances are, you living a victorious Christian life, the chances of that are going to be strongly diminished. But if you fill yourself if you come to church and you actually listen and you take some time to go home and you read it and study it for yourself or you take some time, it is a sacrifice to live this Christian life. It is because, I mean, you look around, everyone is, is living for the world, living their best life. We're going to have to sacrifice some things if you want to get, close, if you want to get closer to the Lord. Maybe there was something that you just thought of that you need to sacrifice in order for you to grow in your relationship with the Lord. Are you living a life being filled with the Holy Spirit inside of you? Or are you feeding that flesh and living in the flesh? What has filled your heart and your mind that may have extinguished or grieved or quenched the Holy Spirit that is inside of you? Jesus, most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us that we may live in the Spirit so that we can do all those things that are pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity. I pray that you'd feed us all. I pray that you'd help us to focus and to concentrate on what really matters, Lord, and that's nothing but you, God. I pray that you would help us that anything that may get in the way of us growing in you, that you would help us to realize what it is and that you would help us to tear it down and to never look back. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Olson.
I don't know if at this time anybody has anything they'd like to thank you for the word, the true word tonight, and we just uh, appreciate that. And while Renata plays, we'll open the altar at this time if anybody would like to come forward. Well, let's stand. Wednesday night that the, uh, God's will be done in that also. Thank y'all for coming tonight and dismissed. Thank you, Renata.